Welcome to the Hawkcast with your host, AJ Hawk. Josh Sitton, no big big introductions here for you. I don't even know how to, to start it out with you, bro. You're a big burly man for people. A lot of a lot of people listen on iTunes and, and just the audio, but we got we have a visual element with you. It's always good. You're joining us on uh FaceTime with your camera. You look good, man. Big old burly beard. You kept it. Your your sweet long hair. How you doing, man? You healthy now? I am doing wonderful. Yeah, man. I've had this long beard for about three or four years now. I haven't shaved it since um since Matt Flynn's wedding in 2013. So my wife uh tends to kind of hate it, but she oh, didn't well. so I was down at your wedding and yeah, I was I was impressed. I mean your hair looked good. You had to have someone do that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I actually <laughs> I feel like kind of a diva. I like we had our the hair lady come down from Green Bay, and I was like telling everyone that it was for Kristen, but it was really so she could be do mine. That's awesome. Yeah, when I was when I got married, I had long hair, and it's true though. When you have when your hair is long, it's so hard to like get it back in like a legit pony. Yeah. That I had to yeah I had a lady sit there and work on my garbage hair for like an hour just to try to look Absolutely. decent. Absolutely, I'm a diva, and I can admit it. You look good. How's your How's marriage going, man? It was, it's fun to see you and uh, you and Kristen go down and see you guys. It was a great party, that's for sure, man. You have some some good <laughs> friends. That uh, it was cool to see your local guys, like the dudes you grew up with, and your brother, and then all of uh, a lot of the Green Bay guys kind of reunite. Yeah, dude, it was a <laughs> it was a blast. We had a great time. Um, uh, it was fun having Mark Tauscher down there. He uh, he always livens things up and has BS conversations with everyone. So it was a it was a hell of a time, hell of a party. So that's in Pensacola. That's where you grew up, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was one like that's one thing that I wondered. So when you when you knew you weren't going to be in Green Bay and you're obviously a, a huge free agent for people to look at, uh, why didn't you go to New Orleans, man? It's pretty close to home. Um. So I had. Um... A few options. Chicago was the first, the, the first one to kind of contact me, and then New Orleans was trying to get me away from there. And then there was a few other like Tennessee and stuff. Um, honestly, I didn't want to be in the heat. I've gotten used to, I've gotten used to playing in the Midwest, and I'm just, I'm fat and old, man. I don't like the heat, so I just, uh, I stuck with the weather and uh, the the grass that I know. I don't like playing on turf or or in the heat, so. So that was a part. Of, that was part of the decision. That was pretty much the whole basis <laughs> of my decision. Um, you know, obviously, I, I saw what you know John Fox has done um, previously, and uh, you know, with turning organizations around. But I, I would say the heat and the turf had most to do with my decision. That's good to know. I I was I knew New Orleans really wanted you. That's the thing, and I, I was talking to you throughout. I remember your your first couple of days uh, when you were a free agent. And then it's like, bam, one, it seemed like you were, what, were you a free agent one day? Yeah, we, let's see, I got cut on that Sunday, and then, yeah, I signed Monday. So, so you just was, you just drove down to Chicago and said, sign me yeah. up? Yeah, we decided to go visit there first just because it was the closest. Um, you know, it just made more sense logistically to, to get there first. And uh, we drove down there, um, I think, Monday morning, and then you know, had a deal done by you know Monday evening. Nice. So you didn't even listen to any. Did your agent try to get you to listen to other teams or try to go visit somewhere else? Yeah, we had. Um, I had offers from a couple other teams, um, but my plan was to get in and get the deal done by Monday, so I could have as much time. Uh, or maybe it was Sunday. Maybe I got cut Saturday. Yeah, it was Sunday. My plan was to have the deal done by Sunday night. So I can have the entire week to, uh, you know, learn the playbook. As you know, learning these um, playbooks can be a pain in the ass. So I just I wanted to have the whole week, and I didn't want to BS around and and I would take it till Wednesday or Thursday, and then be not ready to play. So that was yeah. So man, that's crazy how fast it was. So you signed with them like on Sunday, Monday, whatever it is, and then your first game with the Bears was that six days later. Yeah. How'd that go? <laughs> well. First, I saw a sign Sunday night, and then Monday we had an abbreviated, you know, practice day because it's an extra day. Well, we had a thirty-minute uh, individual meeting, and that's the only time I got to look at the playbook. 
and then we go out to practice and I had to do like two or three team periods. So I'm like not having a clue what's going on. I'm just asking guys, Hey, we're running left. We're running right. <laughs> you know, what the hell are we doing? And then by, you know, by Sunday I had a pretty decent grasp of it. Um, but I was at <laughs> Jay, Jay starts saying something. He's going a, a no huddle play. And I'm looking at my left tackle. I'm like, what the hell is that? What 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 is that? Screaming at him. And he doesn't know what I was saying. And he's just screaming something back at me. So I had no idea what was going on. I ended up going the right way, by the grace of God. Um, but it's pretty funny how uh, crazy this uh, that whole thing uh, kind of went down and how quickly you have to learn it. It's, uh, it's, it was pretty fun, though. How did it feel suiting up for your first game in Chicago? I know from experience, my – so I was in Green Bay nine years, and then I signed with Cincinnati, and I played there a year. And my first day, it was it's kind of like my hometown team, so it was, it was kind of like cool to come home almost. But, but that first game, even my first preseason game, I guess, wearing like the Bengals gear, it felt – it was cool, but it was definitely different. Like I didn't really know where to go in warm-ups. Like, I looked like if anyone was sitting, like watching me, which probably was like my dad, the only one, like I was just running like – Okay, here we go. I'm like running the wrong way. I can't find where the linebackers are warming up. Like, how did did you feel? Like, what did it, what was that feeling when you first got stepped out there six days removed from Green Bay? Yeah, it's super awkward. And it's funny. Like, no one thinks about those little things, like where you line up and warm up. And I was doing the same thing. I'm like following guys around. I'm getting in the wrong lines. I'm like late off the snap count, you know, off the ball. I didn't know where I was supposed to be the whole time during warm ups, during pregame, you know. The pregame routine is usually, you know, pretty set in stone. And then I get here and, like, I've got to change everything up because they, just, they don't have certain things that I'm used to or, you know, whatever. And you kind of have to start a whole new process. But, uh, you know, like you said, it's kind of <clears throat> exciting or whatever, but it's, it's definitely uh, it's different. And, you know, it kind of adds a, adds a new uh, new thing under my belt, I guess. It was uh, it's pretty interesting. Do you want? I feel bad, man. For your, your, this is gonna be a shoulder workout. Are you holding the phone up? Like, you want to, you want to move something? You want to want me to give you a second to move so you can set your phone up or something? Got two pillows under each arm. Okay, good. I feel bad. Like you're, you just got off the field yesterday from the game, and you're sitting here having a full go shoulder workout, trying to hold your phone up. You're good. All right, good, man. I knew you're a tough guy. How, what's the uh, what's the culture like in Chicago? I, I know John Fox. I've, I've heard awesome things about him. The guys love to play for that guy. It seems like Coach Fox is awesome. He's um, you know, like I said before, he's a guy that's turned around a couple organizations with uh, Carolina and Denver. Um, you know, Denver winning a, a championship the year after he left. I'm very, very bitter about that, but um, he's a hell of a coach. And, you know, we've, we've gone through our struggles this year. Uh, we've got a really young team. Um, but we, we got a lot of guys that, that fight. And no matter, what, no matter what our record is, and no matter what you know, we've gone through with injuries and this and that, everybody fights every single game and, and goes out there and tries to kick ass. And that's the type of guys uh, that we have. And the culture is kind of uh, built that way. And Coach Fox comes in. Uh, that's what he brings to the table, and you know we work hard here. Um, work very hard here, um, and uh, it's a good culture. And it's it's uh, we're gonna turn this thing around, man. How do you like living in Chicago? It's a little bit of a little bit of a difference than living in Green Bay, that's for sure. Yeah, it is. But see, we have the facility is uh, forty miles north of downtown, so up in Forest. So we live in Lake Forest, and it's you know it's not a big, um, big city or anything. Uh, it's not similar to Green Bay, but it's not a huge city. But we're you know 30, 30, 40 minutes from the city, so we get to go enjoy the city when we want. But we don't have to be downtown all the time, which is nice. So kind of get the best of both worlds. It's been pretty cool. We enjoy it. How was it? How was it the first time you got to line up with, with your meathead in arms, Kyle Long? <laughs> that dude i've said on here i had erlacher on here and i just i can't say enough about that dude i loved playing against him he just would tr come try to kill me every single play and gore me after the whistle and then just be laughing and yelling and smacking me in the back and he's like oh i love it aj and he's he's just he's the man yeah i've tried to teach kyle a little patience when <laughs> they're going up to linebackers and stuff he, 
literally tries to kill someone every single play. Um, you know, he was actually he was one of the other factors that, that got me to sign here. Um, as soon as I became a free agent, he texted me right away. He's like, he literally he said, get your ass to Chicago. They were on their off day, and he made it a point to um, come up to the facility and come talk to me and, you know, try and, you know, sweet talk me to, to come in there. And, um, you know, it worked, and I'm, I'm happy to play next to the guy. Obviously, he's hurting right now, but we've uh, we've had a hell of a time. He's a, he's a hell of a player, so it's been fun. He's a he's a fun dude to, to be in the locker room with. It was your when you went and visited there? Was it almost like being like recruited from a high school, like when you were in high school at colleges again? Like when you, I know you only took one visit, but when you, what'd you do? Tour the facility and the coaches kind of give you a little sales pitch. Yeah, it's it's like being recruited again. It was um, it was kind of fun actually. It was it was very nerve wracking. I mean, the whole drive down to Scott. Well, once the news got released that I got cut, I was on the phone you know all day and all night, and then. Next day, the drive up or the drive down to Chicago. I'm on the phone the whole time, getting calls from coaches and GMs, and you know, I'm on the phone with my agent half the time, and just it, it was just insane. And it was, um, yeah, I mean, it was like being recruited again. It was, um, it was pretty fun. It was nerve wracking. I, you know, I was kind of had anxiety the whole time, like not knowing where you're going to be and all that. But it was exciting, all in one. It had to feel good, I would imagine, to see like the level of the, the people out there and teams that wanted you. I mean, you all of a sudden you hit the market and it only took you a day to sign, but you had multiple teams like bidding for you. That had to feel a little bit better, didn't it, coming off of the abrupt end of Green Bay? Yeah, and I think that's what um, kind of helped me kind of get through the whole getting fired process. And I get fired and then like, oh, a few hours later, like I know I'm about to be hired again. So like I didn't really have time to sit around and, and worry about Green Bay anymore. It was a very quick process, and I think that it, it really helped. I got you. Is your hand over the over like the mic or something? It's like muffled. Yep. There we go. There yep. you go. Yep. All right. right. Sure was. You're a you're a professional. You sound good. I just want to just trying to take care of the listeners, man, because they want to hear you. Everyone loves loves Big City. Yeah, How many years were you in Green Bay? Eight. Eight seasons. Okay. Yeah, I was I was there nine. Uh I it's funny, man. When I I don't know, like leaving there. I still have like weird feelings about, not weird, but I, I guess I played there so long and I actually played for two other teams, Bengals, and then a quick three-week jaunt in Atlanta, which is cool, man. If you're, you become a free agent again, you would love Atlanta, I'm telling you. Yeah, they were, they they said they didn't want to pay me enough. I, wanted, <laughs> I actually wanted to go there. I was a front there, yeah. Who? So. A player? No, no, no. Just uh, a buddy from high school. I got you. Yeah, that uh, – Man, it did happen so quick, I guess. So you didn't have really time to think about like what, how to, I don't know, take it in or understand exactly why you're not there, what what happened in Green Bay. Do you, do you ever like, do you miss it or do you not have time to think about it or not let yourself think about it? Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely miss, uh, I definitely miss it. I miss the guys. I miss the staff. You know, I miss uh, certain coaches. Um I miss how unbelievably amazing the fans were. Um, you know, you kind of – you're there for so long, you kind of take that for granted sometimes. And um, the fans were truly just unbelievable. And it's uh, it was a great eight years. So, I mean, yeah, I definitely miss it. But, like I said, everything happened so quick um, coming to Chicago that, like, I, I haven't really had time to process it all. And, um, you know, I'm kind of moving on. I'm just I'm – I'm at work every day. It's like I don't – I don't have time for any of that. But, yeah, I mean, I definitely miss certain aspects um, of, of Green Bay for sure. Did The culture in, in Chicago, how does it compare to what it was like in Green Bay? Um, you know what? There's a lot of things that I've um, enjoyed more about Chicago, and there's a lot of things that I enjoyed um, more about Green Bay. You know, there's it's, they're just different. Um and there's plenty of things that are similar. I mean, any NFL team is going to have a high number of similarities. I mean, your schedules are very similar, um, you know, from that standpoint. Um, everything's very similar. But, I mean, there's there's things that, that I miss, uh, how we did things in Green Bay. And, you know, there's things that I, I love how we do here. here. Um, but culture-wise, you know, from a winning standpoint, obviously we're not at that point. Um 
yet in Chicago, but that's what we're building towards, and I think it's going to be coming pretty soon. What's your guys' record right now? Uh, three and three and ten. Does it feel like so? My second year in Green Bay, you were not there yet. We were. We went. No, my third year. Were you there? My we went six and ten. Were you there the first year Aaron started? Yeah, that was no your way. rookie year. Yeah, that was my rookie year. Okay, yeah. so you so you got to but your your rookie year. I feel like did you feel like your rookie year just everything you're just kind of floating around trying to figure things out and you're not yeah. really sure what's going on? Yeah, but your rookie year is just a a blur. You don't even. You don't realize what's going on, yeah. So yeah, I bet that was really the. I guess that was maybe that was the only losing season I had in Green Bay. I think yeah, my my rookie year we were eight and eight, and we almost squeaked into the playoffs actually. But does but I don't remember though when we were six and ten, and, and you could remind me if I if I just can't remember my CTE kicks in. But I don't remember coming in the facility and everyone thinking like it wasn't like doom and gloom. It wasn't everyone's thinking oh woe is me. Everyone still felt like upbeat and it was still cool like do you is it like that in chicago now yeah it is and i mean i think that's how it is uh, you know mostly everywhere you're at this league is so so talented everywhere it's not like it's not like you're going oh and 16 and getting blown out by 30 points every game you know we feel like we can go win every game still you know we feel like we have the talent and the guys here that can go win so when you come into work it's like all right we know we fought our asses off and we uh, and, you know, we, we laid it all on the table, you know, you're literally just a few plays away from winning, you know, probably four or five more games. So you can't, you can't come in and, 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 you know, have a pouty face and be a little bitch about things. You still, still go to work and you try and be positive and yeah, you know, this league is a, a very tough league to win in. And, and like I said, it's a matter of a few plays per game. Yeah, and you you uh you got dinged up earlier this year. Would you have an ankle or knee or something? Yeah, so I had a high ankle sprain the I don't know five six weeks ago against Jacksonville, and then I re injured it against the Giants I think three weeks ago, and then I got rolled up again last night on the same ankle, and it was like that close to coming out, and I kind of like shook it off and and stayed um. But yeah, I haven't had uh, haven't had great luck with the old ankles this year. That ha- how many did you miss any games in Green Bay due to injury? Um, I think I missed two since I became the starter in '09. Okay, who was so? Tauscher was on that line when you started in '09. Uh, Cliff Chad Clifton was there. Was yeah. Scotty Wells the center? Scott Wells um, and. Darren College was the left guard. Okay, so I mean, you were by far the the youngest guy on that line. Mm-hmm. Did they have to? Did they have to like help you out or ever get you lined up? I know you're a cerebral player, as they say. You're like a coach on the field, so I know you you picked up. You knew what was going on, but did you have to lean lean on them that first year? Yeah, not so much from a you know playbook standpoint or anything. I, I think the biggest thing I probably got from um, those guys was from Mark and Chad. It was learning how to realize that it's just a football game and that it's not that big of a deal. You've been doing it your whole life and, you know, it's just a game. Go out and play it. Cause I used to, you know, build these games up like such a big deal. Um, Scott Wells probably learned, you know, he probably overprepared like a, a freaking anal maniac, you know, so he taught me how to prepare um, mentally with watching film and, and things like that. He was, almost on the verge of, of being annoying with it. But, um, you know, I learned a lot from him on, on how to prepare. I got you. Now, man, I'm just thinking when you – it's crazy to think that you signed in Chicago and you're you're on the field starting a regular season game that just, just short time later. Did you have – who did you guys play that first week? Uh, Houston. Okay. In, in Houston. Mm-hmm. With the, was, is there a dome retractable? Does it come off? No. Okay, I was gonna say because that'd be that heat. That would that heat would get you again. No, no, thank God. <laughs> That's southern heat. <laughs> yeah, no. That's southern heat and rain, like we had down at your wedding with that with the red mud or whatever. What do you guys have down there? That clay, man. <laughs> <laughs> what terrible luck that was. It was like my cousin Vinny. Yeah, it was good. Thank God, 
thank God Kristen was at the hotel and didn't even notice it was raining, or she might have been having a little bit of a panic attack, like I was. Yeah, when you so I know you used to always tell me you would you would go home after games like you DVR the games and you you'd watch the games and you have like a funny dynamic, I guess because how you come across, I guess your attitude or I guess how you carry yourself. You're a super laid back guy, and super like it, not that you uh i don't know i guess you're not outspoken but yeah you just you like to you like to talk and diagnose things but then so it, it almost seemed like a weird thing when you would tell me you would go and you'd watch a game or crystal would tell us oh yeah oh, josh would watch the game like at one in the morning when he got home he'd sit there and want to watch and see how he did so you like are you really still like you cut I, you're cutting out a little bit age you got me uh-oh hawkster can yeah. you hear me you hear me? You cut out there for a second. Can you hear me? Okay, now I'm got you. Yeah, I got you now. All right, I don't know where I cut off on you, but I was talking about how you used to tell me how you would watch the game. You DVR the games, you come home and watch them. Sometimes late at night, whenever you get home, you'd always want to see like what happened. I guess. Uh huh. Do you still do that? Um. Yeah, I do. I. Well, now that we've gotten the iPads. We can watch, you know, you watch the game. Like last night I watched it on the flight home, so I'm not as, as anal about watching the game. But if it's a um, if it's a home game, yeah, it's usually the first thing I do when I get home is, is put the game on and watch it and, you know, see. You know, because the TV copy, you get different angles with things and you hear things and, um, you know, you can see it a little bit differently, you know, than the, uh, the game copy that we get. Why do you think you, you always, like, that's the first thing you do is come home and watch it? Um, I just want to see where I screwed up. <laughs> Is that really you? Just so you all, you know the plays that you you did well. Did you you really want to want to see like what what happened if you felt like you messed up? Yeah, like if I got put on my back or something, I want to make sure I want to make sure that I got tripped. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I always enjoy watching myself do well. Um, so, uh, you know, I like, like watching it from that aspect, but I like seeing, um, you know, where I think I might've screwed up and, and, uh, like I said, you get different angles on the TV copy. So you just kind of see what you, what you did or you didn't do and, um, try and write that down in the old noggin and <laughs> not do it next week. I got you. It was always fun to me. It's fun to talk to your wife about that. Cause she would tell me how you would come home and, and watch the games. And if it, someone didn't really know you well and they watched it, they'd be like, oh, City, nothing bothers City. He's nothing. He's not like – he has no anxiety over the game or no nervousness or whatever. Do, do you feel like you do get nervous for games? I definitely used to be a very nervous football player, and that's what I was talking about with Mark and Chad. Like, they'd be like, dude, relax, man. Like, it's just football. Um, you know, over the years I've gotten to the point where I've, I guess, gotten comfortable with – with playing and you know as you as you grow and you you learn more and you know the game slows down for you um a lot of that nervousness goes away it's kind of more of an anxiousness you know excitedness um but then it's funny like, when you start getting start getting to the end you start getting older and the the wheels slow down a little bit that nervousness comes back a little bit because the game the game starts getting um you know getting getting harder again so um, you know, I was, I was, I was a little nervous yesterday. I hadn't played in a couple of weeks and, um, going into Detroit is always tough and playing on a dome, you know, with a loud, uh, a loud, uh, crowd is, is always a pain in the ass. So I was a little nervous yesterday. Like people are always curious about that. How, how much of an impact does it have when you played a very loud stadium, like in Seattle, we played out there many times and you guys would always throughout the week to be blaring music and you have to basically, you, you guys can never hear the count. Like how big of an impact does that have? It's a huge impact. I mean, I would say it's a, if you had to quantify it, I, I would say it's like a five, six, seven play like advantage for the defense. If you had to quantify it just by play number, like, they get a jump on the snap count. Um, so, like, there's going to be certain plays where they just get a jump on the count, and that play is just dead automatically because of that, because we couldn't hear. And then there's usually two or three miscommunications by the offensive line. So that gives them, you know, that advantage on another couple of plays. So it's definitely uh, a huge advantage 
and it, it sucks. You know, those stadiums like Seattle and New Orleans, um, Kansas City, um, you know, even Detroit now. When Detroit's a good football team, that's a loud stadium. You know, it's kind of compact, and it's loud in there. But it's it's definitely makes a huge difference. What do you guys do as an O-line? Like, how do you – is everything silent, and you guys just have to peek out of the corner of your eye to see when the ball is snapped? So what what is new? What was new for me this year? Um, what we used to do in Green Bay, the center would look between his legs, and he would do the. Oh, snap. you! I watch you, Bo. You pat. You hit the yeah, center. I, I well, so I my I get far enough away that I can't pat. I guess I have short. Oh, arms. you know, you wave in front of his face. That's right. Yeah, so I wave in front of his face. So it, that was like a whole new change for me, and I had to do that the first game in Houston, and I've been doing it for you know like two days of practice. So like that was just awful. But it uh, yeah, it sucks. And then the communication is just just a pain in the ass trying to talk. Like it just just doesn't work. <laughs> so when you when you wave in front of the center's face, what you are the one that's that's letting everybody know it's time to snap the ball. Yeah. Now, do you ever have like a fake wave so they can't get a jump on it? Yeah. Okay, and yet you have that going going into the the yeah. You got, you got fake waves, and then you've got fake head bobs by the by the center and stuff like that so they so, try you know but when you up. were so when you but like so say in green bay if you didn't have a wave and the center's looking through his legs you are you just peeking out of the corner of your eye to see the ball yeah really so there's no so would a rod he'd still be given the cadence but you guys may not hear it no he doesn't give a he doesn't give the cadence um there's no cadence by the quarterback in uh, in Green Bay, the center would say "Ready, go." Oh, um, but I mean, you don't hear that. You just you're just going off the ball. That's kind of the tackles. I would think it. Would, I mean, you guys, the whole offensive line has a big impact for, it, but the tackles have to just the despise tackles, that. Yeah, the tackles for sure hate it. It's uh, I'm obviously a lot closer to the ball, so I can see it a lot easier. And a lot of times, even at home, I'm looking at the ball, so I'm kind of used to it. But for the tackles, it's a it's a real pain in the ass because. You know, they got a really a, – a good way to do it is if you're a tackle, you look at the quarterback and you see his leg go up. Then you kind of get your eyes to the center and then you go, you know. But it's a – yeah, it's a pain in the ass for the tackles for sure. How have the new uh, the new rules they've had over the last couple of years for O-linemen, how's that changed uh, how you have to block guys? Well, like the chop blocks and yeah, stuff? Yeah, what, what what's the rule on chop blocks now? Man, I don't know. It's so cloudy, but uh, you just can't hit. You can't hit them from behind, and you can't roll. Like I can't roll from behind. Like if I'm in front of them and I roll, it's fine. But if I roll from behind, you can't do it. And you can't hit them, you know, in the back of their legs, and they can't be engaged with the other linemen. Um, we don't really chop block here, so I don't have to worry about it. Can you chop at the second level still? Is that legal? Like the linebackers? Yeah. As long as you're in front of them, and technically you can't roll. Yeah, right. That's never called. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, gotta be kidding me. You guys roll all the. You're rolling halfway down the field trying to pick them off. Yeah. It, I think last year was kind of a point of emphasis, and it was called a little bit more. This year, I haven't seen it. Um, I haven't seen it called too much. Yeah, I know they. I don't know. Did you see the? Well, you were playing there yesterday. There, I think the clip was like viral. The dude, the big old monster. Uh, Tyrod, Tyrod Smith, the, the Cowboys tackle, left tackle. He annihilated the dude, Eli Apple. I don't really? know it. it was amazing. He, I mean, I, I've said on here before, that guy, I don't know if you've watched him play at all, that Tyrod, Tyrod Smith, yeah. is that right? Tyron Smith. Yeah. Tyron Smith. I always mess his name up because he almost ended my life a few times when I played in Dallas a few years back. And he, that dude is so good. And they were trying, people were trying to say, that it's a clipper. He was just, he was out like on the perimeter and, like a corner safety, Eli Apple's come up and he just, it was like he, he wasn't even there. He just ran, pushed him down. The dude flew back. And I'm like, this dude's like 190 pounds. How's he going to take on the strongest guy in the NFL that can run probably a 4-8-40? Yeah, that dude's a freak, man. I've, I've seen him with his shirt off before and it's, it's, it's very impressive. You guys are like twins. You can't tell the difference. <laughs> yeah, I felt very insecure about myself in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, man. Yeah, that's – what do you think the biggest thing is? Oh, people always ask me about O-line. Like, what makes an O-line good? And I can never really put my finger on it. Like, what makes you guys so good? Like, the ones that are elite, like your level. Um, 
That's a good question. Um, <sighs> is it feet? Do you have to have feet number one? I think, I think, athleticism. So feet, but then good hips. Like yeah. what you can turn and run, or what? Nah, not even that. But like you can, you can bend your hips when a guy is bull rushing on you. You know, a lot of times you get in trouble. You, you know, you get beat in the NFL on your second move. You know, and if you can't move your feet and you can't bend your hips, then you're not going to be able to stop the second move. And then I think once guys get experience, the mental part of it plays a lot to do with it. If you can, if you know what a guy's doing on defense before he does it, then. It's making your job that much easier. But, yeah, I mean, I'd say feet and and hips and then the mental part of it. And strong. I mean, all of you guys are strong. Do you uh, – are you like a weight room guy? Are you strong in the weight room? Because I know going against you forever in practice, you're, you're definitely super cock strong on the field. But are you like a weight room strong too? I, I would say – I would say no. Probably. I mean, I'm not like – I'd say I'm middle of the pack. Okay. Middle of the pack, yeah. How many how many how many two twenty five reps did you do at the combine? I didn't go to the combine, but my pro day I did thirty. Why did what are you saying you weren't invited to the combine? Yeah, I was not invited, no. How are you not invited, but then you were a fourth round pick? How were you why do you think you weren't invited? I don't know. They just didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Obviously they did if they, they still take you in the fourth round. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. You know, I was I wasn't very I wasn't a very highly recruited guy coming out of um, high school, and then I wasn't, you know, I, I was kind of under the radar coming out. Um, you know, people projected me as a free agent or seventh rounder, and then um, I don't know. I had a really good pro day and a good uh, All Star game out in the, the Hula Bowl, and um, you know, I'm not quite sure. I'm glad I didn't go to the combine though, because I had I would have only had. I don't know, three or four weeks to train. So I was happy that I wasn't invited. It gave me an extra month and a half to train for a pro day. And trust me, I, I, I went there. You you weren't missing anything. It's like a three or four day affair. <laughs> I heard and, it's awful. Bro, I'm t- it, the, the first thing I, th- I thought of while I was there, and this is my dumb 21-year-old brain too at the time, Like I was like, we could have done this all in like six hours, like every <laughs> single thing you do. And they'd string it into four days. Yeah, and I know you. I'm sure you're just loving it. <laughs> I love I love being inefficient and wasting time. Oh, that's that's you for <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, you weren't saying anything under your breath. <laughs> I'm so, oh my gosh, man. Yeah, like it's weird, and now it's it's crazy though because now everything is on like NFL Network. So I'm sure now it's ten times worse than it was eleven years ago when I was there. Yeah, it looks brutal. Uh, Everybody that I talked to said it was terrible. I mean, it's just a big get together, so coaches can get together and hang out with each other and network. Mm-hmm. And then now it's a money making thing because NFL Network carries it. I guess Under Armour's the sponsor. They give everyone all their all their yeah. gears full go Under Armour. So yeah, I guess I mean money plays a role in everything. But what's crazy because people love football so much, like the combine gets better ratings than probably all NBA basketball games during the regular season. Yeah. People are dying for NFL in the off season. They'll watch anything. You played basketball in high school, didn't you? Um, yeah, for a couple of years. What position? Um, my first year, I was going to be the point guard at 180 pounds, but then I got moved up to JV and I, I played the the four spot, the shooting forward. How much did you weigh coming out of high school? Um, I w- I played my senior year like 280. By the time I got to college, I was 320. <laughs> was that on purpose? I mean, you felt like you needed to be bigger? No, I just drank a lot of beer and it <laughs> didn't work out. Between that se- between your, your end of your football season, your senior year, and that that freshman year in college? Yeah, I had a good time. It was a good summer. And, and so you went to UCF. How was that overall, like that being down there? It was good, man. Um, played for a hard-ass coach, George O'Leary. Um, you know, there was times where I hated his guts and, you know, the minute I left there, I, I realized how much I respected him and appreciated, um, everything that he did. Uh, although he was a pain in the ass all four years. Um, I, you know, I've never, you know, knock on wood, I've never been fined for being late in the NFL. And I can probably thank George for that because meetings started 15, 20 minutes early down there. So I just, uh, you know, I, I just kind of learned that and you learn a lot of things and, 
at the time you you think he's just being an asshole and you know a lot of times he was but he uh he had some good meaning behind it so i appreciated appreciated my time down there do you still uh keep in touch with him we haven't talked in a while our we have the same agent so we kind of communicate um you know through through him is he still coaching no he retired last year I what, believe. Was your, what was your high school program like? Was it that structured and disciplined like like with him? Um, no, not necessarily. Uh, we had a I had a new coach come in my before my junior year, and I remember I missed like fifteen um, weightlifting sessions during the summer, and he like almost kicked me off the team. And then like he had a serious sit down talk with me and kind of straighten my straighten my crap out and um he was more of a disciplined guy than than the previous guy but it was funny i mean i was this close to to being off the team and then i kind of turned it around and uh ended up being a being pretty good what were you doing during those 15 missed workouts whatever the hell i want to do i don't know i was 16 17 years old in the summertime, like going to the beach every day. I don't know. Pensacola, man. Yeah, you guys, this is a different world. You grew up in a different world down there because you have so many options of things to do. I mean, just being like, where did, how far from where where your wedding was? How far was it where you grew up? Um, About 10 minutes. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was pretty sweet because we, we stayed in a, in a hotel right on the beach. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I remember telling my wife we were there. I was like walking across. We just walked around for a while, and like the whole like beach community, the whole beach feel. I was like, I can't imagine. Like this is weird. People like live here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like a perma vacationer. Well, it's like yeah, it doesn't it doesn't even register to me being from Ohio, and especially now mm-hmm. being in the winter, thinking that this is like real life. It's always when I, whenever I'm there, I'm like, oh okay, well this is like rea- this is like fantasy land, like. I'm going to be going back to reality at some point, but then you think a lot of people grow up down there and get to get to experience that. My life would have been a lot different. I think if I grew up with them in a place like that, man. Yeah. It's funny. You take it for granted when you live there your whole life. But you know, since I've been, um, been, been in the NFL, only spend a couple months there and you get to really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, just having a few, a few months there a year. Do people try to, when you first got to Chicago, Speaking from experience, this happened to me, so I wonder with you, did people try to get you to compare Aaron to Jay Cutler? Um, I got that question a couple of times, yeah. I want to say the reporters got me early on with that and a few guys in the locker room. And it's such a, it's such a BS question. Like, yeah. dude, shut up. I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm not even going to entertain that. Like, just leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> that it happened with me like that right when I got into Cincinnati not as much players players would ask like what it was like in Green Bay but mm. reporters and stuff were like now playing with Aaron Rodgers and he, he was such an elite quarterback like how do you see similarities and differences with Andy Dalton and Andy's an awesome dude I love Andy I'm like I don't we're, they're two different people like what do you mean well, one's a redhead one's brown hair like what do you I'm not going to sit here and de- debate arm strength or how they see defenses it's just a weird it's a question yeah. of trying to compare any quarterbacks and I hate that when I don't know. You, it's a no-win situation for the player. Yeah, absolutely. Me, media's funny. I mean, they're they're doing you know they're doing their job trying to to get juicy details and stuff. But yeah, so it's a, it's a question that if you go there, you're just an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just want some clickbait. So then there can be a just a one headline. They can get someone to to read their their little newspaper to say Josh mm-hmm. and says Jay Cutler is miles ahead of Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Yeah. Which is probably what the title of this podcast will be. So don't worry about it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Um, did when you, so like, I'm just curious about Chicago. I'm curious about John Fox mainly. So my brother in law, Brady Quinn, played for John Fox in Denver. Mm-hmm. And my wife actually went out to their Christmas party years ago. And she was like, if you could play for John, she met him for like 10 minutes and was just around him. And Brady only had good things to say, but Laura always told me, she's like, if you could find a way, if Green, whenever Green Bay lets you roll, find a way to play for John Fox. He's awesome. That's funny. Yeah, John's awesome. He's um, he's always always upbeat and positive, and he's a hell of a time. He's funny. You know, he's not um, he's not over the top. You know, any which way. I, I wouldn't say he's a. You know, a lot of these coaches get. Uh, 
get typecast as a, a player's coach or like an asshole or whatever it may be. He's kind of he, he kind of plays all those cards. He's he's uh, he makes you work your ass off, but he's he's always very receptive to um, things that that we say and that you know recommend recommendations that we have. So he kind of um, kind of has it all, and he, he he's a good guy to play for for sure. Yeah, they. Uh, it, does it feel weird? Is there any like anxiety around the building? Whenever teams are losing, there's always people that think that their job, there's jobs on the line everywhere. And I've been at different places where they say, "Hey, if we don't if we don't win games, then they're gonna start. We got they got to change things up, and it's either, it's either us or it's you." And they they turn they turn like coaches against players. And I've I've had a few weird conversations with coaches where they'll tell me and. Coaches will always tell you it's not going to be me. It's going to be you guys. We're going to replace players. We can. I'm like, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Believe me, I've been I've been fired many times. But <laughs> it, it's it's easier to find new coaches than it is players. So I always <laughs> would try to tell. I would try to joke with them and tell them that. But is there any weird like anxiety or people walking on eggshells worried since you guys do have a losing record? Um, I'm sure there's some of that. Um. You know, I'm 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 not gonna fall into that question really, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's there's always that. I mean, this this is a tough league, man, and and I think if you if you think you're secure in your job, that's that's when your ass is gonna be getting bit. So uh, I think most people are kind of like that all the time. But yeah, I mean, when you're losing, it it definitely creeps up. Uh, it creeps up in your mind, you know, more than when you're freaking winning i mean there's no doubt about that did you have that in your in your mind since when you got in the league i know i always did to where i i always expected to be cut or to be gone i, I didn't expect it but I, I was i never wanted to be shocked by it if i wasn't there and i never would try to like plan for people would tell me in the off season or something hey next november 10th you guys play the texans i'm gonna get tickets i'm like bro i don't know if i'm gonna be here tomorrow so yeah. text me on november 8th if i'm here then i'll try to sign you up for some tickets did you ever did you have that in your brain to where you i guess just don't take it for granted yeah i always kind of you know expected the worst. you know plan plan for the worst you know and I, I would always tell people the same thing i said hey man y'all y'all need to come up and see me play this could be my last year here so you know lambo is a special place you need to get up here and and um and uh, and come see me and actually I told, um, I said that on my, uh, had an interview with Tauscher, um, in the preseason. And I said that, and I mean, sure as shit, two weeks later I got fired. So, um, you know, and, and I always kind of had that attitude, you know, I always felt, um, confident in, in my abilities, but every single day they're trying to replace you get younger and cheaper. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Brett Favre. Uh, AJ Hawk or the the free agent dude off the street, like they're trying to replace you. So I always had that in the back of my mind. That's kind of how I've always uh, gone about things. I think it's healthy. I think it like it frees you up almost because you're not sitting there holding on so tight for this job and, and whatever we call it a job. It's not really a job, but it's like I, I've seen guys that if you just if you think you're set in stone and no matter nothing bad could ever happen it's almost like you have this crazy weird anxiety and i i, I never really had that i always planned for the worst or, or just to not i'm like what's the worst they can do cut me okay and i said that for nine years and then they did and yeah it sucked but yep. i was like I, i'm not dead i could figure it out and luckily I, another team signed me and for you obviously another team signed you for a big deal and a, a multi-year contract so like does that uh do you think like when you did, when they did let you go, were you shocked or by anything? Did you have any feeling that it was coming? Um, I, I, I kind of felt like I wasn't going to be back in Green Bay after this season. I didn't think that they were going to cut me when they did, I guess. But um, like I said, I was, I was always prepared for it. I mean, I, I, I had my house up for sale. You know, I, I, you know, you, you just always got to be ready for those things in this business. This business is, is a, um, you know, cutthroat type business. And like I said, they're always trying to replace you. So I've always been um, ready for that next step. And I think that's why, you know, I've made the transition so well over to Chicago and it hasn't been, you know, that big of a deal. You guys play Green Bay coming up here in a couple of weeks, don't you? In, a, in, a, in like five or six days, yeah. Oh, this okay. Yeah, it'll, we'll post this before the game. So it'll, it'll go up before. And you were hurt last time. Is the game in Chicago or Lambeau? In Chicago. Okay. 
Are you glad that it's that way? Would it have been kind of awkward? I, I know I always felt awkward if I, that's the first thing Laura did when I signed with Cincinnati. And she's so diehard Green Bay and everything about it. But she's like, I just, it would be so weird to go back and play in Lambeau if you were the, I'm so happy that you're signing with Cincinnati because you don't play Green Bay this year. Do, it, are you kind of happy that the game is in Chicago? Um, yeah, you know, the first time, you know, when we went, um, went and played them, you know, a month ago or whatever it was, I wasn't playing, but I still, I wanted to travel, you know, I wanted to go see, I wanted to go see what it was like, you know, on the other side and go see the guys and stuff. And it really wasn't as weird as I thought it would be. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like the type of person that just kind of just goes on to the next or whatever it is. But like, it wasn't, it wasn't that weird. And maybe it was because I wasn't playing, but um, it wasn't, it wasn't awkward. Like it wasn't weird at all. Really. It was, it was kind of, um, it was kind of neat seeing it from the other side and, um, you know, seeing the fans and every everything was cool, but it wasn't it wasn't as weird as I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. So now this week, well, who knows? Barring, I know you're you're a tough guy. You'll be playing against the guys that you practice against forever on the D line. I'm sure they got some young guys and new guys, a couple of them that you haven't faced. Does that if you have any of your Chicago dudes come to you and ask like, oh, what do they do? What uh, do you know any insight on their stunts or what they're gonna do? Um, last time before we played them, um, yeah, a couple of the guys on the O-line, um, talked to me a little bit. Um, but I mean, as you know, there's nothing that I'm going to tell them that is going to do anything special. You know, the, uh, I mean, what you go watch film, you're going to get everything you need to know. I'm not going to tell anybody anything that's going to be, uh, you know, earth shattering. I think that's a big misconception people have that they think feel like someone like that went from one team to another can give them all, all you can give them all of our inside secrets. They're going to know exactly what you're going to do. I'm like, no, man, you can't. It's not that big a deal. Like every once in a while, I don't know if you guys on the offense would get, there'd be like a coach say, oh, little, little birdie, little birdie called me and got some, we got some of their, uh, their calls and they would like write down some like. That your, was that your Winston Moss voice or what? <laughs> no, I don't, well, I don't know if Winston had birdies that called him. I don't know, <laughs> but it sounded like, it sounded like Winston. Did, okay, good. I'll have to call Brady Papinga. I'll get him back on here. And he'll really give us a good Winston Moss impression. <laughs> but people would always say that, and they'd say, "Oh, we got all this info, and we'd have all these like code words." They, if they say, if they say Bluebird, it means <laughs> run to the right. And like yeah. all week, we would do, we would like kind of work on these things, and never once really in the game, it would ever do anything for us. Never once here. That happened this year. We got some. Some inside info on a team and all their stunts and everything. And I didn't hear one of those the whole entire day. So I, and, I, and honestly, anytime I get any of that information, I usually don't even think twice about it during the game. So, yeah, it has nothing to do with anything. It never works. It just doesn't. And so I was in Atlanta, and they actually released me the Tuesday that they were playing Green Bay. And so people are like, oh, did they, did they pick your brain and really get all your info? I'm like, they never once even acknowledged the fact that I – played in green bay or that they were playing green bay like they didn't they didn't care they can't like oh hey yeah aaron's really good try to tackle him don't let him don't let him draw you off sides cool all yeah right. block and tackle man that's about all you can do what about coaching you you think you go, you'll go into coaching someday um as my wife sits here like with a scowl on her face hoping hey, Kristen, tell Kristen i say hello hi aj <laughs> hello um, I I don't know. I've been conflicted about that. I probably won't. I don't have the patience to put in the hours and stuff that they do. I feel like I I know a lot about football, and I feel like I could be a pretty good coach. But I just don't think I could put in the time that they do. I think they're insane. There, I mean, the hours are the hours, and like the moving around too. I would I assume you guys want to have a family someday too. Like the how you, if you want to move up in the business, you have to jump around city to city. Yeah, I just I don't think I could ever do it. Have you think, have you thought of anything you you planned for the future and what you may want to do post football? Yeah, so we 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 do some real estate stuff, and I have a construction company that I own um, with um, one of my best friends from home. Um, so kind of work the construction and the real estate hand in hand. So it's uh, coming along nice. So it'll. That's kind of what I will. That's what I jump into during the off season, and that's what I'll be jumping into um, when I'm done playing. Nice. 
What's what's the worst investment that you've been brought from another football player? <laughs> There's always really good ones. Car washes are always a lock. Guaranteed Dinar. to make money. Yo, Iraqi Dinar. That, that was going around Green Bay for years. Brett Good, man. He was, he it's was about to hit, so- man. It's about to hit. <laughs> I think it's what eight years later. I think it's. I think it's almost time. I just threw that to Nara <laughs> so you got some, huh? I did. Who'd you buy it from, Brett? Good. I think Brett was just making the, uh, getting like the fees for for switching the money out. I think I paid like fifty bucks. It was yeah. like five hundred million dollars or something. I don't know. The Iraqi dinar was that for people that don't know was like Iraqi currency that was going around, and that's the funny thing about a team. It jumps around to where everyone's like, hey, man, it's about to hit, man. You don't want to miss out. We're about to stabilize the government. <laughs> oh, that's fun. No, always, car, no car washes, though. Yeah, that's good, man. That's what I, I've told people. If an if another athlete is in on the business, I want nothing to do with it. <laughs> I'm going to leave that to the dudes in suspenders that that's what they do every day. Yeah, exactly. Man, all right, City. Well, I'm going to. I'm gonna wrap this up and, and let you roll. We're we're excited to. I've been watching you. Like I said, I see you swiping your hand in front of the center's face. But going back real quick, did you, in that first game, did you ever just like were so focused on your your gig that you forgot to swipe in front of his face to get the ball snapped? Yeah, that's happened a few times. Like I I forgot to look at the quarterback's leg because he has to lift his leg or whatever. Or like I'll be at like an awkward angle and I can't like see past my fat arm or something and. And I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm supposed to snap, and we don't. Bad things happen. So what, is that on you? Is that supposed to be on you? It should be. The center should know, though, if he doesn't see it at a certain time. you gotta, you got to let that thing roll and just go. Well, it's never – I think I've recovered every time it's happened, so uh, not, not, nothing too bad has happened from it. That gives me a little anxiety thinking of you having to do that. It's a pain in the ass. I, I like playing at home. Why does it? Why can't the other guard do it? That's what I tried to say. I was like, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> don't made me do it. Like when Kyle's I, I, when Kyle's I, healthy, he's got those I, long arms. That's what. That, that's exactly what I said. It was like Kyle's got these giant gorilla arms. He can reach over and touch me from the other side. Like, let him do it. Oh but man, they didn't want to change it. Well, but. that's all right, man. That's because you're a stud. They put it all on you. You know, I was talking. I was talking about you the other day because I went to pee out on, on my back porch. Mm-hmm. I was like, Kristen, I always loved going to AJ's because he would always let me pee on his back porch. Because <laughs> you just would pull up next to me. <laughs> I get my my little. Uh, we have three three kids now. My youngest two are boys, so my son will will be eating breakfast. And we have like a little breakfast patio, and I'm like, man, where's Hendrix? And we'll look, and he's sitting on a little breakfast patio. And the best is the little kids go full pants to the ankle. So his little butt cheeks are out, and he's just peeing right on the breakfast patio. Don't you go pants to the ankles, too? I mean, just in with solidarity so I can, you know, and we sit there and fist bump, me and him. That's awesome. It just gets awkward when we get in a public bathroom at the urinals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, City, appreciate it, man. Thanks so much for coming on, bro. Good luck the rest of this year. I appreciate it. Good talking to you, buddy. All right, man. See ya. Later. We're glad you could join us for today's conversation. After you subscribe to the show, head over to thehawkcast.com or reach out to AJ directly on Twitter at officialAJHawk to recommend future guests that will help us inspire people to keep talking. Thanks again, and we look forward to speaking with you next time on The Hawkcast.